Good morning, good morning. Um, this book we're going to have a look at this week, it's quite deep. It's called The um, Power of Awareness by Neville Goddard. And basically it's a metaphysical look at the, um, yeah, meta metaphysical look at the world. And it's taking connotations from the Bible and, you know, putting them into what do they actually mean in real life. Now you may think, oh, wow, this is like, you know, all religious is not at all. It literally is a scientific look at um, at the world, and it's pretty interesting. You don't have to believe everything that's in it, but it certainly does give you some food for thought, that's for sure. There's so many chapters in this, but also in this book, this one also has another one called, um, in case you want to look it up, it's called Awakened Imagination. And it's, um, yeah, I absolutely love it. I keep reading it. It's almost like a little Bible to me anyway. Um, just really about life. So one of the one's chapter is like, um, who is your imagination? You know, certain words in the course of long use gather so many strange connotations that they almost cease to lose anything at all, such as the word imagination. You know, one minute it means fancy thought hallucination. You know, in another way, it means that, you know, uses imagination means that his present outlook is too restricted and therefore, you know, he's not equal to the task. And in the next breath, we tell him that his ideas are pure imagination, thereby implying that his ideas are unsigned. You know, um, we speak of a jealous or suspicious person as a victim of his own imagination. And a minute later, we pay a man the highest tribute by describing him as a man of imagination. So imagination itself has sort of gone... You know, where people... To me, it is. It's just like oh, you're in your imagination and it's not true. You're like, you live in your own bubble. And yet, this is the very thing that God has all the ideas of the world, isn't it? Your imagination. Because, say, the mobile phone. Somebody had to imagine it, first of all, didn't they? You know, the Wright brothers, when they wanted to learn how to fly, the, you know, how to fly, they had to use their imagination, yet they were criticized. But what would we be without planes today? Um, the computers, oh my goodness. I mean, I remember whenever I was 16 and doing my, my GC, my, it was my O-level, and um, being told, using the BBC basic machines, and being told that wow, these, one day these computers will talk to each other all around the world. And it was like, oh my God, yes, I am that old. <laughs> so that's what made me laugh. It's just, that was using your imagination, you know, yet... When we're little kids, you know, we're, oh, look at the imagination. And I mean, I used to have a great imagination. And then you go to school and it's like, you know, stop staring out the window, you know, learn and regurgitate and memorize. That's not imagination. Imagination is where the world has been created, isn't it? Yet we dampen it down and we don't use it. So this is what's saying about literally. The only one thing in the world is imagination and all our deformations of it. And that's where Einstein actually said that imagination is more powerful than knowledge, but we put more input on knowledge in the world, don't we? Imagination is the very gateway of reality. We realize as we live by imagination, we can truly be said to live at all. There's so much that goes on here, and I'm, it, it goes really, really deep, but I'm not going to blow your mind this morning about where it takes the Bible and, you know, why the word Christ, and that's your imagination, is actually, you know, like the baby is born, that's your ideas. And so many times, you know, they're like stillborn ideas, aren't they? Because you could be walking along in the woods, being very, very quiet, and then you get an idea. And you go, God, yes. And you feel your heart gets all excited about it and everything. But by the time you've come home, you've killed it. It's like stillbirth. How many ideas have you had that you've just wiped out because you've let your programming come in and go <clears throat> like that? So listen, I met a girl one time who had all these ideas for a book. And there's so many people out there. You've all got ideas for a book and you can all do a book. I promise you. Just write it yourself. Stop thinking about what other people are going to think and just write it. But she had all the ideas for the book. She literally had the title, the cover, 
and all the chapters, but she didn't write the book. Three years later, she went to a networking event and she met a girl and she says, yes, I've just written a book. I've just got it published. It was her book, her book, her title, her cover, her chapter headings, everything. That there's a lesson. You see, the ideas are out there. You didn't make it up. You were given the idea, but what did you do with it? Or you mentioned it to somebody and they said, you can't do that. Promise you, I promise you, if you've had it in your head and you've seen it and you felt it in your heart, it is yours. You wouldn't be, you wouldn't have the want for something if you couldn't do it. It's just the programming then comes in that, you know, isn't even ours. It's from centuries ago and it's programmed in our bodies, the bodies that we've come with. And we let that programming take over and that keeps us limited. Whereas our imagination, we don't need money, we don't need anything, we can go anywhere we want at any time. What ideas have you had? Go for it. Just go for it. You just don't know what you could what you could actually do. And you know what it's saying in here that sin isn't you know looking at morals and conduct and stuff like that the greatest sin in the world is not knowing who you truly are and the ideas that have been given to you and not going with them yeah and thinking that you're small whenever actually you're absolutely totally amazing that's the only sin in the world i mean there's so many things whenever i was growing up that i was told it was a mortal sin i mean one time i didn't want to go to mass and it was a mortal sin Believe me, it was easier to go to mass. <laughs> so, is imagination a power sufficient, not merely to enable me to assume that I am strong, but it is also of itself capable of executing the idea? In other words, if you've had the idea, does that mean everything you've got? You can, it's been given to you to do the idea. Because in this world, if everything is here, science shows us that everything is here, right here, right now. There's only a series of noise. There isn't a future. There isn't a past. There's just a series of noise. So everything exists right here, right now, omnipresent. That means the way to do it is here. It's just you're not aware of it yet. Like how to fly a plane for the Wright brothers. Everything was here. They just had to become aware of it but they had to have the want and the desire to do it as well. Um, truth depends upon the intensity of the imagination, not upon external facts. Love that. Facts are the fruit bearing witness of the misuse of the imagination. Man becomes what he imagines. He has a self-determined history. Imagination is the way, the truth and the life Revealed, we cannot get hold of the truth with the logical mind. A true judgment need not conform to the external reality to which it relates. Oh, I love this one. You did not choose me, I have chosen you. The idea chose you. Yeah, imagine that. The idea chose you. And stop looking at the logic. You know, logic is what's already happened and facts and evidence of past thinking. So this, oh, this the future hasn't happened yet. It's a series of nows. So imagine creating each now, wondering what you could do next, not based on what you were previously done, but what is completely possible. I love that where it said basically, Oh, hang on, I've got to read it again. Truth depends upon the intensity of the imagination, not upon external facts. What is your truth that you know? Stop asking other people. You know it. You've got it yourself. You don't need validation from anybody else. You've got it all in here, in your heart. You felt it. Run with it. There you go. What's been going on in your imagination um, that you've not actually done anything about? Stop putting your dreams in the shaft. Take them off and just go for it. We're not getting out of this world alive anyway. Let's go and have some fun and just, just really go with what's been going on. What can you do? Tell me, actually, I'd be interested. What's been going on in your imagination 
or even have a chat with me, you know, and then I can help talk you through some things and help you get that belief. I'd absolutely love to do that. So if you want to chat with me, just private message me and we can have a chat and um, tell me about your dreams. Just if there's nobody else you can tell, tell me. Yeah, I'd love to hear. Anyway, have a good day. See ya.